it's with great pride and great gratitude that I introduce the donors of UMC's first million dollar gift that launches the Centennial Campaign. Henceforth, UMC's Level 1 Trauma Center and ED shall be known as the Cher Legate Trauma Center. Please join me in welcoming Jim Shearer and Sam Legate. Could you step up, please? <laughs> well deserved. Thank you. I'm going to tell you a little more, so sit down and relax for a minute. James F. Shear was born in El Paso, Texas. He's a third generation El Pasoan whose grandfather was a visionary who believed in the future of this community enough to collect large tracts of land that included favens and significant areas of the Upper Valley. He's a graduate of UT Austin and University of Houston. Jim was admitted to the bar in 1976. He served three terms on city council from 1977 to 1983. He is a very successful trial lawyer who has tried over 200 cases. You could say he has a justice button. He's a big believer in the democratic process a belief which is we can s clearly see he is instilled in his family. Maxie, are you here? There you go, yeah. <laughs> Sam Legate was born in Austin, but he had a father that believed if you didn't like something, you could do something about it. That affected a lot of things for you and I. Sometimes that meant moving to Presidio or Oklahoma, or in Sam's case, El Paso. Sam has been recognized as a Texas super lawyer every year since 2006. He's been a member of the board of directors of the El Paso Downtown Management District since 1997. And more importantly, he is a past member of the El Paso County Hospital District Board from 2000 to 2007 and vice chair of that board from 2003 to 2007. He has been the founding director of El Paso Children's Hospital Board since 2007 and has served as the chairman from 2008 to present. All of that is Yeoman's work. He is the catalyst in any room he's in, no resting on your laurels with Sam. His vision, his insistence on excellence for this community brought UMC from the dark ages. Hello? Can you hear me? From the dark ages to the financially stable, nationally recognized academic teaching institution it is today. He gave us Jim Valenti, and he and his wife Barbara were one of those similar families who never gave up on El Paso having a children's hospital. His example is the role of one man or one woman can play in affecting change for good. The story goes that Sam and Jim met in an elevator as Sam stuck out his hand and said, Hi, Mr. Cher, I'm Sam Legate, and I'm the lawyer you're looking for. <laughs> the rest is history. Today, they have set the standard high once again, and in the course of their everyday work, they have seen firsthand over and over again the work of the everyday heroes in the UMC Trauma Center that saves life and limb on a daily basis, that returns those injured to their loved ones and to a life that would not have been possible if it were not for the life-saving care provided here. It's important to add that the family of attorneys at Shirley Gate are all participants in this gift. Most of them were born and raised in the El Paso area and share a unique appreciation of the El Paso border community they serve and particularly value its culture and its diversity. So we would also like to thank the partners and associates of Shirley Gate and ask them to come forward. Victor Viganowski. <laughs> Joseph, Joseph G. Isaac. J. Roberto Oaxaca. Jeffrey B. Pamel. Connie Quintero. Oscar Mendez Jr. You know, guys, if we empty the room and everybody's up here, that's not going to work, right? <laughs> Maxine Marie Cher. Alejandro Acosta. He's, he's out of town. He's working. James D. Tani. And Michael Gomaka. Michael Gomaka. He came up. Oh, he came up on his own. Okay. Please join me once again in heartfelt thanks to Jim Sher and Sam Legate and everyone up here. We are proud. We are honored, and we are grateful. I give you Sam Legate. Thank you. Uh, I just want to start off with never underestimate what a good bottle of wine can accomplish. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> Denise is very diligent. She wined and dined Jim and I one night with a lot of wine, and here we are. <laughs> Next thing we know, we were presented with a contract, and there's our signature. So uh, we accept the responsibility um, proudly. Uh, there's four things I want to talk about real quickly. Um, you know, never give a, a lawyer a microphone. Uh, the four things are service, sacrifice, leadership, and transformation. And as I stand here, uh, I, I came on the board in the, in, in the year 2000, shortly after my daughter was born. And uh, the hospital at that time was losing roughly $20 million a year. And me and a, a very, very strong group of people, which I, it's so fun because I saw my partners in crime. Uh, Steve DeGroat, are you here? I know you are. Ron Acton, uh, Rosemary Castillo, she was our board chair. Uh, Rick Suarez was super instrumental in this facility that you see right here. And Charlie Gutierrez, uh, to name a few of the, that were on the board at that time, that really saw a vision for this hospital. Uh, one thing I've always felt about uh, Thomason and now UMC is that it is the heart of this community. And as it thrives and as it succeeds, so does our community. And that was the vision we saw and, and Rosemary Castillo helped shepherd, was to have pride in our community and have pride in the facilities. And this community reflects all of us. It serves not only the rich, but the poor and everyone in between. So it was with much pride that we, we made this gift. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about is sacrifice. Every single one of us in this room and have provided service, and many of you provide sacrifice every day here at this hospital. And it's important. Uh, Jim and I aren't the richest guys in town. We're not the Hunts, the Fosters. In fact, our law firm is moderately successful. But the, the, the gentlemen and ladies with me all wanted to make a sacrifice of their future and of their success in the future to make this dream happen for our community. And the, the last item I want to talk about quickly is leadership. Jim and I, many of you know, have tried to lead by example in this community. We try to put our money where our mouth is and build this community in every way that we can and everywhere we can touch. We try to push, shove, pull, whatever we can to, to bring our community to the very top because it's with the pride that we have really and love that we have of El Paso that we do the best we can to bring everything to the very top and have the standards. Uh, you know, like I used to tell them when I was on the board of UNC, I don't want to hear that we're the best on the border. I want to hear that we're the best in the world. And that's the standard that both Jim and I uh, share uh, for our community and for ourselves. Um, and the, the, I want to talk about leadership because while Jim and I have been leaders in the community, we're getting old and we're not going to be here forever. But these guys right here, they're our future leaders. And many of you in this audience, my daughter's here, Jim's daughters are here, and they're, they're the people that we want to lead by example. And every one of us uh, have that responsibility to lead by example. And the final thing I want to talk about is if you espouse the qualities of service, sacrifice, and leadership, you can transform. And that's what we see in our community, and most importantly, we see on this campus, is the transformation that has taken place in the last, you know, uh, well, since I started in 2000 to now 2014. So with those four qualities, uh, you can accomplish everything. And those are the values that both Jim and I's parents uh, espoused on us. You can do anything you set your mind to. And those are the values we believe in each and every one of you and the values that we believe in our community. So thank you very much. And it's very much our honor and pleasure to be able to struggle and hopefully pay for this gift we've given the, the hospital. <laughs> and now, please welcome James F. Scher. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And first, I want to apologize to my daughter Maxie. We were supposed to have a Maxie Marie Share rally for U.S. Senate that we passed on to have this event, and that's okay because we'll make it up. But the most in, so that's number one on the wager you all made last night. <laughs> uh, first thing I'd like to do if I may, I want to make some introductions of some people that are really important. First off, I'd like to introduce my family to you, if I may. I'd like to introduce my wife, Elma. If you please stand. 
other anime share. My daughter, Raylin Share, and when you talk about sacrifice, she's known what it's about. She came here from San Diego. My uncle, Carl Friedman. My cousin, Romy Friedman. And I saw my cousins, Lewis and Cindy Cohen. And if you would, please stand up. Thank you. And, and of course, Maxie, my daughter, and everybody may, may sit down now. And I'd like to also introduce members of our law firm who've all made the commitment uh, to participate and help make this contribution real. So if you would, the entire Share Legate staff, would you please stand up? Thank you. November 23rd, 2013, my wife Elma and I were driving in our brand new Lincoln Navigator. It was a big vehicle. We were, it was right before Thanksgiving during the holiday season, coming on Interstate 10, right by Bassett Center on a Saturday. It was about two to three o'clock in the afternoon. We were in the far left lane, which we were traveling 55 to 60 miles an hour. As we're driving in front, in front of us with two lanes to our right, I see this thing unfolding. In the right-hand lane, a vehicle starts moving to the left, which I actually I didn't see that. I saw the second vehicle. It hit the second vehicle in the middle lane, and that, those two vehicles spun 90 degrees right over by Bassett Center directly into a concrete barrier directly in front of us. We were 50 to 60 feet away. There was a, right, a blue car or some vehicle in the lane next to us. And all I could do is yell out to my wife, we're gonna hit. The impact at 50 to 60 miles an hour was severe. We, all I saw was white. And I thought, well, I must be gone and I'm going to heaven. It was bad. Finally, after time elapsed, the airbags came down and I recognized that I was still alive. The airbags, the seat belts, a big vehicle and someone above was saving our lives. But I looked over at my wife and she couldn't breathe. Fortunately, EMS came immediately attending to Elma and they took her on a backboard. I didn't care, I was hurt but I didn't even notice it. The first responder said, you don't have a choice. You've got to go to the most important and immediate facility. You've got to go to UMC. And I was grateful because I knew already about this facility. They took us immediately over here. And they put us right here in this trauma center. And my wife was in there and she wasn't attended by one doctor. She was attended by a team of every discipline that was necessary, with MRIs, x-rays, everything that was necessary. Both of us walked out that night and we prayed and said thanks for being alive. That's a story, ladies and gentlemen, of this trauma center. It's a story that our law firm and we as individuals live and breathe every day understanding. In this audience, there's some friends and clients of ours who understand what it means to have the number one trauma center in this community and one of the top in the world. Victor Ichigoyen, are you here? Por favor, levántese. Vic, está bien, si yo puedo hablar en inglés, está bien? Victor Ichigoyen is our client and our friend with Mr. Scruggs. In, in the audience, Mr. Ichigoyen was a sanitation worker for the city of El Paso. He was on the back of one of our sanitation trucks and it started moving at 10, mi 10 miles an hour. He fell off. He fell off and he hit his head on the pavement and he was bleeding, unconscious on the pavement. And the ambulances, EMS took him here and he was operated on 
by Dr. Ty Rock and the staff of this hospital. He, they gave him, he lost something like 12 pints of blood. And if you don't think that's a lot, ask the doctor around you. He was unconscious and they read his family his last rites. But because of this hospital, V3 Chagoyan standing up with his wife right here with us. Thank you, V3. Oscar Avalos, está aquí con nosotros. Okay, I, I'm sorry that. Y también hay uh, Israel Lara. I'm going to give you two other stories very quickly. And we have many, many, many people that we have seen this where they've saved their lives. Oscar Avalos was a, a trench, working as a laborer in a trench in the upper valley and the trench collapsed on him and he was crushed under thousands of pounds of dirt suffocating they with punctured lung totally unconscious they brought him here again they read the rights to last rights to his family but because of the trauma center here Victor Ichigoyen is alive today and he's doing what Oscar uh, uh, Oscar, thank you. Oscar Avalos is alive today and he's doing great. Thank you for this Oscar. And, okay. uh, and then we have finally uh, Israel Lara, who got hit as a pedestrian by a 18 wheeler at about 40 miles an hour and he was absolutely told his family was told that he had died he was in a coma for 23 days and this hospital brought him back to life and he called and told us that he was not going to be able to be here but he wanted to send his blessings and thanks for him being alive today because of university medical center our trauma center at this hospital has many, many success stories. And that is what excellence is all about, ladies and gentlemen. It is excellence, setting the highest standard for our community and for our country so that we can have the best, not asking anyone else to do it, but we have the best and work for the best and we are the best. It is with great pride and honor that our law firm, Cher Legate, are contributing and are participating with this hospital. And for all of us, we know how important that is each and every day. Please help this hospital and please help our community grow and prosper. Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce the CEO of the El Paso County Hospital District and University Medical Center of El Paso, Mr. James Invalenti, to accept this gracious gift. Thank you. This is a moment in time that I wish we could put in a little time capsule and keep it because there's so much uh, thoughtfulness and so much love in this room. And it, it's one of those special moments that you want to relive uh, and relive it and to the families uh, on both sides and I the, to the moms uh, you know we are so pleased and blessed uh, and look what's been achieved uh, let's give them a round of applause I want to talk about uh, the number 100 and I want to talk about vision passion uh, and, and courage and th those those items are reflected with everybody in, standing up at this podium definitely Jim and Sam and their entire firm but it also represents everybody in this in this uh, tent but also it transcends throughout the community the hundred means next year will be a hundred years old 
and just think we have a lot of gratitude because the, the people just think of what this was here a hundred years ago it was a little room that's what it was I think the forefathers would be a very proud and amazed of what has been accomplished because of people dreaming like the people that we have here Jim and Sam and all the individuals in this room they would be astounded it's a it's utterly amazed so this starts the inaugural hundred year campaign uh, the centennial for uh, UMC the El Paso County Hospital District and then let's talk about vision and passion and courage I want to talk about Jim first I believe the revitalization of El Paso began with the transformation of downtown El Paso and one of the leaders to start that was Jim and and many others remember Hotel Baghdad you know downtown and every time I would go home and come to work the drapes were flapping in the wind because the windows were all broken out and now it's a double tree and that was the spark that created the downtown revitalization which also starts the revitalization for all of our community that took vision certainly passion and courage to be able to do that there's many people that have said in this community what what is before you could not take place there's people today that say uh, we're foolish that's not this community and I implore upon everybody in this tent to have the courage to make tough decisions have the courage to dream your vision your passion and anything can be accomplished the next person is Sam everybody knows Sam has passion it just bubbles from his DNA and his vision those board members I am honored to accept this gift on behalf of the entire campus it's transforming it's transforming this campus it's significant I have a lot of uh, emotion and so um, and I and I feel strong because I've got uh, so much uh, caring in this room and we can accomplish great things together uh, Jim and Sam told me a story that if there was out of their law firm all the associates that you stand up I want to honor all the associates and the partners in the firm because Jim and Sam told me back in December he said this would not be possible if one said no I don't want to do this and so look at the vision the passion and the courage all of them had in us in this dream that we all believe in so let's give them another round of applause on that I'm going to be on this earth for a short period of time and we all want to make a contribution in this tent don't we everybody wants to make a contribution to make it better for the next generation for our children and and it is symbolic with what's happening today so let's keep this little time capsule of moments of the stories Jim told of the messages Sam mentioned and and of course Denise and so uh, with that I am so honored and I told Jim and Sam I am speechless with regards to that that generosity we are honored we are honored uh, and thank you